many people worry about whether their old favorite games are still going to work. Do you know there's been hundreds of hit games developed for Windows XP and Windows <laughs> Vista? And these hundreds of hit games have been tested. 98% of them are compatible with Windows 7, take advantage of the optimizations and improvements that Windows 7 has provided. So basically there is no problem when it comes to gaming on Windows 7. You guys can still play Sims 3, Civilization, Age of Empires, whichever else. And one of the things I think that's interesting about gaming on Windows is it's actually the number one gaming platform in the world. A lot of times people think it's Xbox or they think it's one of the other console systems, but it's actually Windows. Primarily because they have a lot of casual gamers. You know, if you're playing Solitaire, you're playing Minesweeper, and also if you're a hardcore gamer who's playing Halo, Gears of War 2. So what Microsoft has done is we have this Games for Windows brand. And we award this brand to any game that meets the high compatibility, high quality, and high safety standards. Then we can give it a game for Windows. It can plug into our marketplace over here, which um, lets you see if there's new demos for the game available and new add-on content for the game. It also tracks the history of the games that you've played. One of the nice integration points is, if you look at the top right, that's my gamer profile. It's called Hello Kitty, and it crosses over between Xbox and PC. Yeah, I know it is. It's kind of funny. Um, but it's good when I kill people on Xbox and they're like, Hello Kitty killed me. You're like, yeah. Um, the gamer score comes from, uh, from achievements. And you get achievements by um, doing well in some of the Windows games and in some of the Xbox games. So add those together and you have the true gamer reputation. If you have a high gamer score, it means you're good at games. Or it means you play a lot. It looks very realistic, like a pawn. And if you touch it, you can see the splash effect. And yet my finger remains dry. Amazing. Uh, and uh, if you hold your finger down, it starts attracting the fish. So the beauty of this multi-touch and touch interface is it really does allow all kinds of new applications to be created, um, taking advantage of this touch gesture. Example of one is Microsoft Surface Globe. Now this has a little bit more educational aspect to it than the pond. Um, you can touch and rotate it like any other globe, but what's really cool is you can even zoom in on places, and it's getting the pictures from the internet from virtual Earth, and as it caches up, you can zoom in deeper and deeper and deeper. We can go into Las Vegas, which is, of course, a city of love and sin. All goes <laughs> together. And we can see all these 3D models and buildings. These are taken from photographs from a satellite. Um, and you can come flying through the city. This is such detail that you can even see the sign in Caesar's Palace. And Celine Dion is still playing there. So that's just one of the cool little features here about Microsoft Surface Flow. Now, actually the most impressive demo is from these guys. Um, Travis and Jeff, they're from Touch Dimensions, and they've created a game called Autumn, Autumn Dynasty. Dynasty. <laughs> and uh, what's, what's very interesting is not only does it run on this multi-touch platform, but it also runs on Xbox, it runs on a regular PC, it runs on Microsoft Surface, and it runs on a Windows mobile phone that they'll show you. Alright, so I'm Travis and he's I'm Jeffrey, Jeffrey, just in case anyone was confused. The cool thing about this game, right, is it's a strategy game that's disguised as a Chinese painting. What you can do is you can use a brush, as Jeffrey is using, to actually order your troops about. In this game, it's a bit like Go, in which if you surround your opponent, you can actually win. Just like the Microsoft Surface Globe, you can use your fingers to move and zoom in around the map, just like this. Okay, but just that you can't play it with two people at the same time. <laughs> so, with this um, game, anyone can become a thinker general. So, we are trying to put the strategy back in strategy games because this zoom and pan feature allows us to manage like large-scale epic battles like all over the map at the same time. And it's not just about clicking and how fast you can do it. So you can actually surround the enemy with all your troops. So besides running on like the Windows platform, this game also runs on the mobile phone out here. So you can see that it's slightly different on the mobile phone because the screen is smaller, but you can still play with the stylus in pretty much the same way. For example, you can circle all of them and you can move them around just like the other game. 
However, we have some special features on this phone which is not available on this computer. Since we can't tilt this computer too much, we can actually tilt the phone like this so that we can get around the map easily. And that makes up for a smaller screen. So, we've got this brush down here, and we were wondering if like anyone would like to be a general for a few moments. Yep. So we could... You see, there's this cool battle now. Maybe you try to help the blue color defend. You control the blue color. I don't want to be red. No, for this, you can control the blue. Oh, okay. So we have to kill all these? Yep. So as you can see, there are no hidden LEDs or